welcome and thank you very much for coming back to watch my videos i appreciate that so in today's video i'll be showing you how to draft a high waist pencil skirt with a slit at the back and also a zipper at the back and i'm going to add a waistband And you also be needing the skirt measurement. You need your waist circumference, your hip circumference, your knee circumference, and the length of the skirt. And also, you'll be needing your waist to your hip measurement. So without wasting much of your time, let's get started. So I have my pattern paper in front of me here. And I drew out this horizontal line on top of the skirt, which serves as my starting line and also my waistline. And I have a vertical line, which helps to measure the horizontal measurements. So let's get started. I label here waistline, and this line is my center front. So to start with, if you want to add a band to your skirt, you minus the band height from your measurements. So in this case, I'm making a high waist skirt. So I'm not going to minus anything of the waistline. So the waist to hip I'm working on is 8 inches. Cut it with a straight line. Now from my waist to my knee is 22 inches. But I don't like marking exactly that 22 inches because when you sew the skirt, you'll not be able to walk properly or freely inside because of the tightness around the knee area. So I'm minusing two inches from the 22 inches. So my waist to my knee is 20 inches. Now from my waist to my hemline, that's the length of the skirt I'm working on, is 40 inches. So I'm labeling the lines. This is the waistline, this is the hip line, this is the knee line, and this is the hem line. Now that you are done with the vertical lines, now you will be putting your horizontal measurements. So starting from the waistline, the waistline I'm working with is 25 inches. You divide the 25 inches by 4, and I got 6.25. So you mark the 6.25 on the waistline. Now you'll be taking one inch for the tax intake and also 0.25 for each allowance. Now I'll be dividing the hip measurements by four. And the hip measurement I'm working on is 34 and half inches. Divided by four is 8.6. The hip measurement you can add is if you want, but some people want it as it is. So coming down the knee line, Whatever I have for the hip circumference divided by 4. So this 8.6, I'll be minusing 1 inch. I'll be left with 7.6 inches. So I will increase the 7.6 inches on the knee line. So to get a perfect hem line, you'll be imputing whatever you get on the knee line, also on the hem line. So 7.6 Before connecting the points On the hip line You can come down between 2 to 3 inches So in this case I'll be coming down by 2.5 inches And I'll be connecting the lines And then from the knee to the hem line I connect with a straight ruler So next I will be checking 2 inches for the hemming allowance So in order to get a perfect hemline, a 2 inches here for the hemming allowance, I'll fold it. So when you fold it, you see it will be visible like this. Hope you are seeing it. Then I'll just connect the line down like so. Because the down is not meant to be straight. If you connect it straight along the way, you will be short of fabric when hemming the lower part. The next thing we'll be doing is to create the dart for the front panel. So to create the dart, you need your nipple to
to nipple measurement. That's your bust span. So your bust span divided by two. So the bust span I'm using is seven inches. Divided by two is three and a half inch. And I'm marking the three and a half on the hip line too, to get a straight line. From the hip line, I'll be going up by two inches for the dart length. And on the dart leg, I'll be taking one inch that I added here and place it here by splitting it half an inch on each side. So the next thing to do is to connect this half an inch to the dart length and also connect this one to the dart length. So this is our front dart. Next, I'll be adding one inch side seam. And you can also choose not to add the seam allowance on the paper, but when cutting on your fabric, you can add the seam allowance there. But in this case, I'm adding one inch for the seam allowance here. Coming to the waistline up, on the side, I'll be going up by half an inch. On the center front on the waist, I'll be coming down by half an inch. This helps the skirt to sit well on your waist. So, I'll be adding half an inch on the waistline for the sewing allowance. Don't forget that you are going to cut this on fold. Once we are done with the drafting of the front panel, I'm not going to cut it out. So next we'll be moving to the back panel. This is my back pattern. I've already ruled out the waistline, the hip line, the knee line, the hem line, and then the two inches for the hemming allowance. I mark it down and also I mark two inches for the zip allowance you can mark one and a half one inch this is the zip allowance now you start imputing the horizontal measurements so I'm starting with the waist the waist divided by four is 6.25 and then 0.25 for each allowance and then one inch for the dart Coming down the hip line, the hip I'm working with divided by 4 is 8.6. So, coming down the knee line, as I did on the front panel, whatever you have on the hip, that's 8.6. You'll be minusing 1 inch, 1 and a half, it depends on how fitting you want the skirt to be. I'm going to mark 8.6 inches here, then we are going to do some manipulation. I'm going to connect it with a dotted line because this is where you should pay attention. And I'll be going back to the waistline also to do something there. I just put the dotted line like this. So on the knee line, if you have a big back, you minus half an inch here and then half an inch here so that you can get that shaped and fitting for your back. On the knee line now, whatever I minus here, because I minus one inch from the eight, 7.6. I'm not it. 7.6. So 7.6. You are going to be marking half an inch here. You take half an inch inward, and then on the knee line on the center back, you are going to go in by half an inch. But if it's somebody that have a big back, you can take one and a half inch here, and then here you come in by one inch, and then here you come in by half an inch. But in this case, I'm sewing for a small size person. So I'm, the one inch I took, I'm going to come in half inch here and then half inch here. So coming back to the waistline, please pay attention here because the back is a little bit complicated, but it's the perfect way of getting your back because our back is not straight. Our back is a bit curved. So if you make it straight, you see that this, when you wear the skirt, the back will be pumping up or the back will raise up, which is not so nice. So what you are going to be doing is on the center back on the waistline here, you are going to go in by half an inch. 
and then we come down by four and a half inch we connect with a curved line like so and this half an inch you took from here you are going to add it to the waistline or else you'll be there will be shortage of measurement the waist is 6.25 plus one inch is 7.25 that's 7.75 that's what we have here now because whatever we took here the half inch we took here we will place it here on the side i hope you people get it right so coming down to the knee line whatever you have on the hip line you minus one inch because this is for a, a small size person if it's somebody that have a big back you are going to minus one and a half depending on how you want the pencil side of the skirt to be so this 8.6 inches i'm minusing one inch so if you minus one inch you you get 7.6 so 7.6 will be here on the knee line but you are not going to take the 7.6 you just shape it on the side like this you are going to split the one inch here so this line is the 8.6 minus the half inch half inch i took here that's one inch so what you get in the middle is 7.6 so if you minus one inch from the 8.6 you get 7.6 but you are not going to mark the seven you are not starting it from here and mark the 7.6 here no you go in by half an inch and then on this side too you come in by half an inch the next thing to do is whatever you get on the knee line the 7.6 you are going to mark it on the hem line and on the hem line you go in the same way as you did on the knee line you go in by half an inch you can go in half an inch like this and then you mark 7.6 that's what we want and if here this knee side will confuse you when you go in half an inch you from this half an inch you just mark your 7.6 like this you see where it end so next i'll be connecting the lines and to connect the hip to the knee you have to go down by two and a half inch as i did on the front panel like so so for it to get a nice curve on the hip side i'll be connecting the point See how the back looks like so the next thing to do is to create the the waist that to do that you need your nipple to nipple measurement that's your bust bone you'll be dividing your bust span by two so the bust span i'm working with is seven inches divided by two is three and a half inches so i'll be marking three and a half inches but you are not marking it from this half an inch line no you mark it on this straight line and this straight line is the that line and on the hip line you are going to go up by one inch or one and a half inch that's the length of the dart and then on this dart leg you are going to take one inch that you added here on the waistline and split it into two and mark half inch on each side then you connect the line to meet this point and this line to meet this point so this is the back that so the next thing is to go up on the side here a half an inch you can go up up to one inch you can go up up to 0.75 but i'm taking half an inch this half an inch you are going to curve it with a curve roller to meet the waistline here on the back center front you are not going to come down by half an inch as you did on the front panel no you will just go up on the side and then connect it to the line like this so after doing that you'll be taking one inch for the side thing on the waistline you are going to take half an inch you are going to mark half an inch for the sewing allowance but before doing that you come to the zipper allowance and mark back the two inches for the zipper line because after taking half an inch in and going in by half an inch this line is no more straight it's kept now what you have to do next is to go back on this skirt line and mark the two inches back up to the hemming allowance 
so you are marking it on this line hope everything is clear so the next thing we are going to be doing is to mark our slit for the back you know the back has slit so we are taking about 18 inches on the hem line this is the length of the skirt this is the hem, uh, hemming allowance you are not marking it from the hemming allowance you are marking it on this skirt length so you are, we are marking let's say depend on how high or how open you want the back to be and for the zip we will mark 8 inches for the back zip so next we will be adding half inch sewing allowance on top of the pattern and on the side I mark one inch for the size seam allowance but on this zipper line you don't add any allowance after you cross check if you left something on them next I'll be cutting it out so as you can see I'm done cutting my back panel this is my front panel so as you can see, I'm done cutting the front and the back panel. In my next video, I'll be cutting it on fabric to show you how to sew it, how to line it, how to hold the dart and how to cut the band for it. So we have come to the end of this tutorial. If you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share to your families and friends, subscribe, share and leave comments down below the comment section if you have anything for me so thank you very much for watching don't miss out on my next video bye